So yeah, hi, I'm um, going to talk about online political advertising. Um, it's something that some of you might have come across quite frequently because, for example, in the 2020 US elections, over $1 billion was spent on Facebook alone on online political advertising. Now, it is a powerful tool. It can increase engagement in the democratic process. But with this power comes a risk of abuse. Scrutiny into online political advertising really started with the 2016 US election and Brexit referendum because of evidence of interference from foreign actors. But there are more gen general uh, risks of abuse. For example, spreading disinformation or uh, trying to dissuade people from going to the polls or engaging in inauthentic behavior, uh, misrepresenting one's identity. Now, as ma with many things in the online world, legislation really hasn't caught up. And this has meant that oversight on political ads um, largely falls to the major advertising platforms themselves. Platforms such as Google, Twitter, or in our audit, Facebook, nowadays Meta. These platforms have developed their own policies for dealing with political ads in what's called a self-regulatory model. And to their credit, Facebook has one of the most extensive and comprehensive policies. So we took them in our audit as one of the most advanced state-of-the-art policies, plus they're one of the largest platforms online. And we audited whether their enforcement of their own self-developed political ad policy works well. Their ad policy revolves around the definition on ads about social issues, elections, and politics. I'll use political ads as shorthand. There is a quite lengthy definition that really goes into detail when an ad is in scope of this policy. And when it is, there are a number of requirements. For example, that uh, the ad must indicate that it is paid for, uh, who it is paid by, and um, the advertiser must also self-declare that the ad is in scope of the policy. The enforcement then evolves in, in part around catching those ads that the advertiser failed to declare, and, but that are still in scope of the policy. And when they fail to do so, Facebook tries to catch them retroactively, uh, take them off the platform, and label them as an ad without a disclaimer. They're also added to the publicly available archive of all political ads. Our audit then uh, used all active ads by pages that published at least one political ad uh, during our measurement period of over half a year, a period which included the 2020 US and Brazil elections. Now, most of these ads were not really interesting to us because they were either properly declared by the advertiser or they were actually not political in nature at all. In our study, we focused on the 189,000 ads that were not properly declared by the advertiser, but that either Facebook or we determined to actually be political. And these are the interesting ads, because these are the ads where Facebook's enforcement system has to kick into action or actually kicked into action. And this table already summarizes our results, so we try to uh, classify basically these 189,000 ads. And in the presentation, I'll go into more detail on the two types of errors that we observed. And I'll start off with the false positives. So these are the ads where Facebook detected the, as, the ad as political, even though it was not declared as such by the advertiser, but that according to our analysis is actually not political in nature. And we used a manual annotation of 600 ads for our, our analysis. And we asked ourselves, are these ads in scope of Facebook's political ad policy? Because prior work has shown that definitions and opinions on political ads can be subject subjective. But we wanted to avoid this bias by sticking as closely as, as possible to Facebook's own definitions. Based on this annotation, we found that 55% of the ads that they actually detected were incorrectly detected. Um, and when we extrapolate this to the rest of our data set, this is around 40,000 ads. And these ads spanned a number of themes. There were purely commercial ads, for example, selling cars, but there were also public health messages uh, at the time, especially related to COVID-19. So these were 
beneficial public health messages that Facebook blocked from actually reaching their audience. And then there are, of course, the silly examples like the extremely political pie recipe on the right. Moving to the false negatives, these are the ads that were not declared by the uh, advertiser and that Facebook did not detect. So they did not retroactively label them as political. But according to our analysis, they are actually political. And for this, we used a, a statement in, in Facebook's definition that all ads from clearly political actors should all be declared. And we discover these actors then through external lists of known uh, political Facebook pages and the self-declared category of each page and, page. and then we selected categories such as politician or political party. And based on this analysis, we found a lower bound of almost 117,000 ads that were not declared by the advertiser. Um, and that advertiser was a clear political actor and still they went undetected. So still Facebook's enforcement failed to find these ads. And these were ads from major political parties, major political candidates, and usually uh, having a very clear political message. So they should have been pretty easy for Facebook's system to detect. So to summarize these results, we find that, that Facebook's enforcement is currently quite flawed. We computed classification metrics, and for example, the F1 score on the right, which ranges between zero and one, with one being perfect classification, is only at 0.29 for this system. So there are quite a number of ads where Facebook's system makes the incorrect decision. And we see that half of the detected ads should not have been detected, harming availability of ads on the platform, and that Facebook misses at least as many ads as they actually already detect. And this harms integrity of the platform because malicious ads do make it to users. Now, why might this be the case? We identified a few possible limitations in the enforcement strategies, starting off with the approach. Facebook themselves state that they mainly use automated solutions to detect uh, violating ads. But it seems that these solutions do not learn obvious signals of political intent. For example, the advertiser. So we suggest that they, for example, do this and then also complement the automated review with simple rules that are clearly enforceable. Secondly, there seems to be a lack of consequences. Facebook again states that they might prohibit pages who run violating ads from running ads in future or they might take down the pages altogether but we did not see any evidence of this. Uh, we even saw over 70,000 ads, that's political ads, that still ran, even though ad these political ads were banned in the US during the 2020 elections, or after the elections. Third, there seems to be a lack of consistency as well, and performance really differs globally. While in the US, maybe only 1% of ads are missed, in Malaysia it was 45%. So it seems that this performance is not spread equally across the world. So Facebook should adapt their policies and their systems to local contexts, making sure that their models understand local languages or that local issues are incorporated. Fourth, the policies of Facebook are still quite ambiguous. Even in our analysis of the false positives, we still disagreed on almost a quarter of all ads on whether they are actually in scope of the policy, just because the policy is so complex. And this complicates compliance by advertisers and eventually even enforcement by Facebook. So we recommend that they clarify their policies and simplify their policies to make sure that compliance and enforcement becomes easier. And finally, Facebook really emphasizes transparency. They, they say that by making data transparent, such as their archive of all known political ads, by having this transparency, then people co can hold them and advertisers accountable. But with bad enforcement comes bad transparency. All those 117,000 ads that they missed are not known to be political by Facebook and do not make it to the archive. So it's impossible for researchers like us, but also journalists and nonprofits, to audit these ads and hold the people who publish these ads accountable. So we advocate to archive all the ads and make all the metadata available to enable outlets like ours. Because we really believe that with better transparency into the ecosystem, we can also achieve better accountability. And when there's accountability, there's an incentive. There's an incentive for advertisers to start complying, and there's an incentive for Facebook to start improving their enforcement. 
and once we have better compliance and better enforcement, then we achieve our goal of better security. In our case of the online political advertising ecosystem, because we want to make sure that the benefits of online political advertising start outweighing the risks and the vulnerabilities that also we identify. And this would help us to maintain the security of online spe political speech as well. With that, I'd like to thank you for listening. My contact details are on the slides, as is a link to the paper. And I want to give a shout out to the Ad Observatory project from my collaborators at Cybersecurity from Democracy. If you want to play with this kind of data on political ads, I would highly recommend that you check their website. Thank you.